Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we are uh, discussing syntax directed translation and definitions in our videos now. This is the last problem we discussed in the video, in the recent video. We have taken the uh, prefix expression grammar and we have constructed annotated parsing. At the same time, we have written the semantic rules. For every production rule, we have written the equivalent semantic rule also. Now let us see one more example in that and we move on to the next problem. So this is the example I have taken 3 into 5 into 10. So first I am going to construct the parse tree for this. So t is the root of the parse tree. Now this t can be expanded as f t dash. Further this t dash can be rewritten as t dash star f t dash. Again this t dash can be rewritten as star f t dash. Finally, this t dash is replaced by epsilon. So now we have constructed the parse tree. We have to convert this into annotated parse tree. And at the same time, we have to show the direction of the flow of the graph. So in a parse tree, every time, most of the cases, the leaf will take the value because the leaf node is receiving the value from the lexical analysis. So f takes a, f is in fact expanded as digit and this digit value is supplied by the lexical analyzer. So here the digit value is 3 in this case, here it is 5, here it is 10. Accordingly, f takes a value from the child node, the value flows into the root node. It means the attribute is the synthesized attribute. So everywhere f takes the value from a child node. Here it is 5. In this case it is 10. Okay. Now all these nodes, the corresponding attributes are initialized with the values. Okay. Which is the next node is getting the attribute value. Once f takes a value, its sibling t dash. t derives f t dash. That is one production rule. Once this f gets a value from here, it is passing the value to its sibling. So, I am calling this variable name as inh. It means inherited because it is inheriting the value from its sibling. So, its value is now 3. Now, this node, at this node, the attribute value is calculated from the parent node as well as from its sibling. So t dash dot inherited at this junction is nothing but 3 into 5 which is equal to 50. So this is the next operation takes place. Again further the value flows down to its child node. So this t dash is calculating its attribute value from the root node as well as from the sibling which is nothing but 15 into 10 which is equal to 150. Further, there is nothing to flow down here because t dash is replaced by epsilon. The parse tree growth is stopped here. Right? Once the parse tree growth is stopped, now the value whatever is generated is stored in the same node. So if a value is generated by the node itself, it is called as synthesized attribute. So let me uh, define the same node by another attribute which is nothing but syn indicating synthesized attribute. Now this value is assigned to it. The attribute value is stored here. Now this is 150. From here the value must be passed to its parent node and to its parent node likewise it should reach the root node of the parse tree. Now this value is passed to its parent node. The parent node is here. So from the child node when the value is passed to the parent node that attribute becomes a synthesized attribute. So let me call it as syn, which is equal to 150. So from here, again, the value is being passed to its parent node. So t dash dot syn is equal to 150. Now from here, the value is passed to the root of the parse tree, which is, you can call it as value also, any name you can give, but it is also synthesized attribute, which is 150 now. So, to define this annotated parse tree, in fact, we have used three attributes. One is value, another one is inh, another one is syn. 
this value and syn are synthesized attribute only this inh is inherited attribute when you can call an attribute as inherited attribute if it is accessing the value either from the parent node or from its sibling then such values are called inherited attribute let me just number the order of the evaluation so this is the order so this is the first step or first semantic action taken place from here the value is passed to its sibling then from here the value is passed to the child node here the attribute value is being calculated from the parent node as well as from its sibling similarly here this is the fourth action then further t dash is replaced by epsilon so no growth of the parse tree nothing to flow down in the parse tree so this is the fifth step takes place i mean the same value whatever is generated is stored here then from here it is passed to its parent node its parent node from there to the root node this is the order of evaluation of the parse tree uh, students when you are practicing this practice the annotated parse tree simultaneously try practicing uh, the semantic rules also this is a most easy concept you can do it easily now let us see one more uh, problem yeah this is a problem give syntax directed definition and draw annotated parse tree for the following statement so what is the statement int identifier there are three identifiers which are separated by comma so in most of the programming languages we come across this this is nothing but declaration statement all right so for this statement this is a corresponding grammar the grammar is d is the start symbol of the grammar it is defined by two variables t l where this t is data type it can be either integer or float what is this l this L is nothing but list of identifiers. L1, just to differentiate between these two L, this is just defined by the subscript L1 and ID. Finally, this L can be replaced by ID. Sometimes a grammar may be given or may not be given in the question paper. So, better to remember the grammar also. So, as usual, what is the first step we have to do? For the given string, we have to draw the parse tree first. So let us start drawing the parse tree. D is the root of the parse tree. From D, it is being expanded as T and L. D is being expanded as T L. Now, as per the string, now T must be replaced by int. So there are three identifiers. So let me replace like this: L, comma id uh, further this l can be replaced by l comma id finally this l can be replaced by id so we have constructed the parse tree now if you look at the leaves of the parse tree you are able to derive the string int id comma id comma id so we obtained the string we have constructed the parse tree. Now the thing is we have to convert this parse tree into annotated parse tree. At the same time the semantic rules also for the grammar we are going to write. So as I said first uh, leaf nodes we have to observe. From the leaf nodes on first the attribute is to be synthesized then only it can be inherited by the other nodes. So this is the only possibility. T directly derives integer. So this value is being passed to the root node okay now let me define this attribute by type so t dot type is equal to integer so this is the first step happening here okay correspondingly now let us write the semantic rules against the production rule we have two rules right t can be replaced either by integer or t can be replaced by float so t dot type is equal to int suppose if it is a float data type the same t dot type is equal to float so when you are drawing the annotated parse tree this is the first node which gets resolved i have numbered here itself okay now from the node the value is being passed to its sibling so what is the sibling here l 
D derives T L. So from the node T, the value is being passed to L. So how do I define it? Since it is an inherited attribute, let me call it as INH. L dot INH is equal to this integer. Okay. So L dot INH takes a value from the node T dot type. So now easily we can write the semantic rule. Okay, come to the first production rule. D derives TL. This T is nothing but it can be either integer or float. Already we have written the semantic rule. Once this node has determined its value, the value is being sent to its sibling. Isn't it? So since it is sending it to its sibling, this attribute is nothing but inherited attribute. So how do I define L dot INH is nothing but T dot Type. So this is the second operation takes place in your annotated parse tree. Okay, now let's move on to the parse tree. From here, the value is being sent to its child node. So what is a child node? What is a rule first? L derives L comma ID is a rule. In fact, we can differentiate it by L1. L derives L comma ID is a production rule. So from here, the value is passed to its child node. From the parent node, if the value is passed to its child node, that is also inherited attribute. L dot inherited is nothing but integer. Once the data type is known of the corresponding identifier, it means the compiler has understood this identifier is of type integer, isn't it? So it is making an entry into the symbol table. Now let us write the semantic rule correspondingly here. Okay, so once this node is resolved as of now, isn't it? TL, this node is resolved. Now this L is expanded as L comma ID. Since this head of the production rule is resolved, from here the value is passed to its child node. Now there are two semantic action takes place. One is L1 dot inherited is equal to L dot inherited. That is the first semantic action. Whatever the data type this node got, the same data type is passed on to this. Apart from that, one more method is being invoked. What is a method? Add type. What this method does, it just makes entry for this identifier onto the symbol table along with the data type L1 dot inherited, right? So this is the third action that can take place in the annotated parse tree. Okay, now let's continue in the parse tree. Okay, now this node is resolved. From here, as usual, the value passes on to the child node. By the way, L dot inherited becomes integer here. Once this is resolved, the identifier, the data type is also known, isn't it? So the same semantic rule is being executed here. This node is coming to know the data type from this node, right? So correspondingly, its identifier is being entered into the symbol table. Then from here, the data type is being passed to the child node. Now ID knows the data type. So the same method is invoked against this production rule also. Add type ID dot entry. The identifier is made entry into the symbol table along with the data type L dot inherited. So this is the fourth action takes place. Okay, now finally, I'll just conclude what is happening in the parse tree. D is a root of the parse tree. D is expanded as TL. Again, L comma ID, L comma ID, parse tree is constructed. First node, what is resolved is this. This T takes a or comes to know the data type is nothing but integer. From here, the value is being passed to the right sibling. Since the value is passed from the sibling, we can call it as inherited attribute. By the way, L dot inherited is equal to integer. This integer is nothing but you can write the semantic rule, right? L dot inherited is nothing but T dot type, right? This is how we are writing the semantic rules. From here, the value flows down to its child node. L dot inherited is equal to integer and by the way since the from the parent node the value is posted to the, the identifier also being uh, what to say it is desired as of type integer 
So for this identifier, correspondingly the entry is made into the symbol table. For that, we are invoking a method called add a type. Right? So it continues till the end of the parse tree. So here I have mentioned the order of the semantic rules also here. Against every production rule, there is a semantic rule. And we have mentioned the order of the semantic rules, how it is getting executed. So I hope you have understood this. Please practice a the problem. Then only writing the semantic rules will become easier. I'll meet you in the next video. Thank you.